your final day in prison. What was that like? Ready to go. Let's get to it. Let's get it. This second, this next chapter of my life. You maxed out uh, your sentence. It's over with. No probation on that, and I'm good. Like I got out, and I was on probation. I actually started my record label when I was on probation. I got my own pub, uh, publishing company when I was on probation. Did it for like three years. My probation officer was like, you know, I'm gonna go talk to the judge. Woo -woo. I ain't went to talk to the judge. The judge was like, you sure you won't let him off? You know, the judge was like, she wanted, she didn't want to let me off. And he was like, yeah, I'm gonna let him off. You know, he let me hear his music, and you know, he doing good. I ain't had no problems out of him. So she was like, go take a drug test. I was like, what? And right on the spot. You know, I went and took a drug test and passed and came. And she let, they let me off. Was probation hard to do? Yeah. Because I ain't do right. I'll be honest with you. I don't think nobody do right on probation. But, you know. Is that like walking on eggshells? Man, walking on razor blades. If you violated, what would happen to you? Go back to prison. For how long? Uh, I think I would have had to, what I do? Kind of like three years, something like that. Another three years if you violated? Yeah. yeah. The flat in the cell. I actually did a, an interview with somebody. Yeah. Um, that actually did his, they could have let him out earlier on his sentence and gave him probation. He chose. To, to do the full time because he didn't want any probation because he didn't want to get tricked or anything like that. Yeah, because when you on probation, like the meat meal situation, it starts over every time you go to jail and come back. So it's up to the judge's discretion. Like if you got five years probation, you do three, four, you do four good years and violate, she send you to prison. They don't, the time don't keep going, it starts back over. So when you come back home, you're back on the five years paper. Mm. That's, pro, that's not parole, that's probation. It's different. So a lot of people on probation is set up for you to fail. Explain the difference between probation and parole. Just what I said, like parole time never stops. Probation time stops. Ah. Like it started over. I see. Yeah, that's why Meek Mill, what he been on paper, been 12 years. Don't make no sense. But you did all the time in your plea deal that you were given. You yeah, I did. Yeah. You weren't able to, okay, you had good time because of the county's time you did. Yeah. But you weren't able to have, like, any good behavior time shaved off. Nah, or, none of that. None of that. The classes and none of that stuff didn't affect it. So you knew your final date. I'm just, yeah, and, that's, and that's, that's good, but it's like you're looking at that day on the calendar. So it's like when it slow down, it's like pulling the hill. Did you keep that date secret from people, or did yeah. other people know? Nah, I kept it to myself, pretty much. On the, on the, on the inside, I kept it to myself, because I ain't want, you know, you know how they go. I, explain to people watching this why some people do let other people know, but other people will keep it to themselves. Because jealousy and envy is everywhere, you know, even in prison. Like, you going home, some, some people don't want to see you go home, you know. And they'll try to do anything they can do to provoke you, to get you to put you in a situation where, you got to defend yourself, now you're stuck in the penitentiary, sitting in the system, you know? Everybody ain't happy for you, that old saying. Was it emotional on that final day for you? Yeah, yeah. Cause I knew I was coming out on, on papers and I knew if possibly I can go back for, you know, where I was trying to, because you got to restart your life all over from scratch, so. And that was the hardest part. First person you saw when you left prison? Tiffany. First thing you did on your day out, absolute first thing. She came to Atlanta. You came to Atlanta on your first day out? <laughs> yeah, I had to turn up, man. What about your first meal in the free world? State. Do you remember where? Uh, Was it Houston's. a bougie? Okay, so you had a bougie meal. Houston's. Fancy. Now, um, you were used to eating what was in prison. Yeah. And now this is, this is food in the free world. Were you able to keep it down, or is that because you're eating something different now, does it like, well, run eating, right through you? I was eating some free world food when I was in prison. So it, it was cool. I was eating the, I, I knew a couple, couple of COs, so 
Ah. Yeah. So your stomach, uh, it wasn't affected. Not all the time, but once or twice a week I was eating, you know. Then I was working out so much, I was eating up a tuna fish, and I, so I was cool. I see. How soon before you had sex for the first time? That day. Now, um, looking back and adjusting back into society, into the free world, how easy or hard was that for you? I won't say it was hard because you, you start from scratch. You ain't got nothing. Like, because, like, you got you to take in consideration I was on the run before I went to prison for, like, four years. So it was, like, basically 10 years of my life. And I had to get licensed, everything all over. I just started, like, I didn't have nothing. Not a penny to my name. And that was only seven years ago. Now we good. Were you still up to date with everything that was going on in the free world while you were locked up? Yeah, yeah, I, you know, yeah. Because technology changes, music changes, things change, but you were able to keep up? Yeah, we got technology in, in the opinion. Did you miss out on anything specific though? Whether it was a certain phone or certain technology while you were, lo while you were gone for four years? That you can mm, remember? Nah. Anything that shocked you when you came back? Anything mm. that flat out just, wow, I can't believe this is how, this is what's going on nowadays, or this is what's happening, or this happened, or well, anything when I, that shocked well, you? Well, honestly, when I went to prison, the iPhone wasn't, it wasn't, then when I came home, they had the first iPhone, so I think that's when Rick Watson had it in the video. Mm. And everybody was like, you know, so. So, of course, you know, I had me one, but I was like, okay, Apple, iPhone, you know, that, that was it, but not really. Hard to learn? Nah, I pick up on stuff easy. How long before that institutionalized feeling wore off for you? Shit, as soon as I got outside the gate, because cause like I told you, I had a plan, but I just didn't have an artist. So it was like, I put the plan on the back end, just focus on getting money, so... When when the time came, I had money to get an artist or whatever, but it just fell in my lap. Like I said, I got a musical background, so it all worked hand in hand. So you weren't like wearing slippers in the shower, or cutting your towels up, or any of that sort of thing that may happen. When that institutionalized feeling. Oh nah, nah. You know, doing some things like you were doing in prison. Well, I can say well, I can say this: I stayed in the house a lot. I did stay to myself a little bit more than I normally do. But I'm, I'm kind of like self-centered, stay to myself in the mm. But I stayed in my, you know, I stayed in the house a little bit. A little antisocial? Yeah. Introvert? Yeah. I, and it may be because I was trying to figure out my next move, but I did stay to myself. How long do you think that feeling of staying to yourself uh, lasted for? Mm, probably like five, six months, I think, something like that. Somebody watching this, let's say they just got out and they are watching this interview. Uh, any do's or don'ts for somebody adjusting back into society, back into the free world? Anything you would advise Man, them? Don't hang around the people you was hanging around before you went if they ain't mean you no know, good. If they ain't ride with you when you was locked up, you know, just move on. Cut them off. Did you have a good support system when you got out? Yeah, yeah. You continued to stay in shape when you got out? Yeah, I still work out to this day. Now, judging your experience, right? And it could be a variety of things for this answer, but what's one thing you would change about the prison system if you could? If you could have it your way, what's one thing you would change? The food they eat. The food they eat. Feed them better, f feed, you know, feed them better food. I think C. Murder on a hunger uh, strike right now, he's not eating right now. I think he's doing it for something, some other reason, but, you know, I used to go in, the, when, I, when I worked in the kitchen in prison, the box would say, not for human consumption. That would be the, the meat, the meat patty they was cooking. So, yeah, that's why I was just eating tuna fish. Is that legal? I guess it is. Why would they serve something that says, not for human consumption? Right. But who's me? I don't know. But it was, you know, what it was. 
Do you think this will ever change in your lifetime? Nah, I mean, it's a big money thing. It's a lot of money. Keep, you know. Some people have said the prison system is like modern day slavery. Do you agree with that or disagree? I agree. In what the, ways? The monetary way. It's about money. Explain. Well, it would be all day if I explain about that, but it's... In a nutshell, what could you say? The others make money off the off inmates. Just bottom line. And you know who was incarcerated, right? Who's the dominant racist incarcerated? So, yeah. Okay, so you had thoughts of the record label. Yeah. You had this vision. Yeah. This vision came in. Okay, you did prison for four years. When did this vision start well, in the four year span? I sent some stuff home where I wanted to start uh, the nonprofit organization called Feed the Youth. And then I want to start uh, the record label was New Money Entertainment. So that was like probably like a year year in year where I was probably been locked up like a year at that time. And I was like started getting motivated on what I wanted to do when I come home. So I kind of put the plan in writing and I followed the print. But you know I detoured a little bit because things ain't as easy. You know how the industry is. So you know we're still fighting, we're still moving, but. We got it going. So you went to Atlanta on your first day in prison. That was a music industry, music career choice for that move? No, I just came to kick it, to have fun. Oh. I wasn't supposed to be in Atlanta, but I was like, shit. Because Atlanta is a capital. I don't know if it was the capital back it then, was, but at, yeah, Atlanta is like the New York, uh, New York City of the South. This was in, this was in, when I, uh, before, when I, when I got out, it was in 2011. This not oh, been that okay. long ago. Atlanta was shaking. Yeah. So, okay, so you came to Atlanta to kick it. Um, did you ever end up moving to Atlanta? Nah. Tennessee. Hmm. Nashville. The place where you actually got apprehended. Yeah. Crazy, right? Mm. Sounds ironic. It's a movie. Okay, so you had the vision for the record label. At what point, give me the timeline, when you actually hit this studio? Because you gave us a story about the studio scenario in the last segment. So yeah. how soon before you actually start rapping in the studio after you were released? June 2012. Like a year. I was still on, I was still wasn't supposed to be outside of state lines, but. I was uh, I was in Nashville, and it was 2000, June 2012. I was still on probation and everything, but I just, you know, what I'm saying, I knew I knew it was gonna work out. It was written. I wrote it in ink. So when you manifest something like that, when you when you pray over something, and when you really, you know, what I'm saying, your heart, God know your heart, you know. So He knew what I was doing, what I was doing. So so I could change. So basically, you signed yourself. Basically, I am signed. You were the first artist on your record label. I am. I've had China Rose, uh, Info, he's a part of it. Um, who else? I'm not really know about that. Uh, and that's it. But you were the first. I'm the first, yeah. The whole thing's ironic. Man. That was not the plan. It, the plan was nah, not for you to be an artist. Because you got thanks, man. I had never been in a booth before. I had never, I had never rapped like in school or nothing. And like growing up, beating you know, on the bathroom or none of that. At, at the table, I'd never done that. But I guess it was the seeds that was planted. Like mom put you in the church choir and you in the high school choir. And you playing the drums one year in middle school, stuff like that. It was the seeds that was planted. I never knew that. Because I was playing football my whole life, so my plan was to play football. So, But I never knew that music would be what I do. Because I sing too, so I don't just rap. So, What's the meaning behind the label name? Street Fame Entertainment. Yeah. 
if everybody, a lot, <clears throat> most of the people in the streets want fame. They want to be known as a neighborhood hustler, whatever. So at that one particular point in my life, I felt that way. So it's kind of like I took something that I gave so much to and was like trying to bring some light on it. So now when I look at it, it reminds me where I went, where I, where I come from, like, you know, because we was riding around old school Cadillacs with the Vols, you know, the systems in the back, the cocaine, white guts, and we really was out there like that, you know what I'm saying? So, and you know, like they make music today, they, they say, they talk about stuff that they don't do or they don't live. And I come from an era, you know what I'm saying, if you talk about it, you, you had to be about it, you know what I'm saying? So basically my music is a reality, that's why, you know, <clears throat> that's why I call it Trap Soul. Because we was in the trap, we was hustling, and then so as part of it was, you know, we was putting our soul into the music. So I got that's what that's why I call my style trap soul.